Hello, my name is Solomon Rios, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, fiction and how it kind of uh, influences our mental health and kind of societal health as a whole. Uh, I'm going to be taking the direction, uh, the position more of, uh, from the perspective of, of the anti-hero and how it has risen over this past century. So traditionally, a hero is someone who exemplifies virtue, idealism, hope, and who is going to do anything to combat the forces of evil or some great obstacle in their life, in their journey. Now, this has worked for centuries. This has gone back as far as we can tell. We've always told stories of, of heroes, and we've always loved to see them triumph and to uh, showcase those things in ourselves that we wish we could be better at or that we want to improve at. But as the centuries wore on, uh, specifically in the 19th century, people began to grow bored with that. As modern society progressed and societal issues arose like poverty and uh, corruption and people began becoming more educated and getting more of a mind of their own, they started to question, you know, what are these distractions we're seeing on screen or reading uh, in the pages of a book? Are these really the best of humanity and why do I not reflect that? Why uh, does hope always prevail? Why do these heroes blunder through life and somehow succeed at everything with through blind luck or sheer, you know, feats of strength that are frankly impossible? Um, researcher Marcia Homiak, Homiak speculates that Aristotle seems to think that at bottom any non-virtuous person is plagued by inner doubt or conflict. And for so long, we've seen to reflect that in our villains and through our less desirable characters. And the hero is always the shining pillar of perfection and just confidence. Even when there have been doubts in the hero's journey, they, they tend to overcome them. They tend to be handed them when it's right their time. And the hard truths are always kind of shied away from. Enter the anti-hero who is plagued by inner doubt, who is very mortal, and much of their struggles come from mortality, uh, being flawed, being unsure, not being able to, to fight the, the evils, the battles that come at them in a conventional sense. And that is, that is why this, this growing fascination with the anti-hero has kind of arisen, because people want to see themselves reflected, uh, as in anything, they want to feel connected to uh, the trials and tribulations of the characters they see on screen or they read in the book. And anti-heroes kind of give that. They're not necessarily, as, as most people often think, evil. They are, they're more the, the kind of reverse of, of a hero, and they go about it in non-conventional ways. Now, that's all very broad, and we'll kind of hone in on some of the aspects of anti-heroes that that make them what they are, that make them so fascinating. Particularly, uh, what most people are inter interested in and what most people cite as the difference between a traditional hero and an anti-hero is the use of violence. This is most commonly used, most typically uh, exemplified as the biggest difference, and it's that anti-heroes will usually have not as strong a code, uh, more, of, more of a more of an aggressive approach to situations, shall we, shall we say. Um, and it can, all, it can all be tracked back to starting with uh, Clint Eastwood's film, the film Dirty Harry, uh, in which he is a kind of a, not quite crooked, but definitely not moral or by the books detective who is willing to do anything to solve a case uh, for the right reasons, of course, just doing it the wrong way. And this kind of uh, sparked a an interest, a national interest, a world interest even, in this idea that, you know, the dirty work can sometimes, uh, can sometimes lead to the, the right outcomes. And even if it doesn't, it's, it's, it's more the, the thought that counts in, in kind of a weird backwards way. Um, and anti-heroes are almost never rewarded for their violence, which is something uh, interesting, it's usually the cause of their struggles. They're their own worst enemy in a lot of ways. And when they are rewarded, uh, it's very almost backhanded, which, which is kind of uh, different from a traditional hero who, you know, you'll never see them kind of 
have to have suffer the fallout for too long of, of a violent action that they take. But mainly, Antiheroes uh, represent kind of a societal and social criticism of what we see around us, the people we see around us, the people who lead us, and uh, it's, it, it's kind of a dialogue between creators, artists, and the general populace who wants to be represented and wants to know that their voice matters as well. Uh, Lawrence Rand said in his thesis paper, wrote, as social criticism developed in the 19th century, the hero revolutionary became as much a norm as any other social critic. And I think this is the root of antiheroes. This is why they're so fascinating is because at their core, they represent what we uh, wish we could do, what we wish we could say, what we want to see happen, that action, or rather like a cure to that inaction that so many proper heroes um, and, and leaders that we see you know, don't take. Antiheroes kind of represent uh, a social criticism that, that is most commonly called uh, wish fulfillment. And uh, wish fulfillment is, is kind of the, both the driving factor that supports antiheroes and that, that seeks to kind of uh, discount them. Wish fulfillment is essentially, you know, all those things you wish a character would say or wish someone would do when under extreme pressure, uh, pressure is is usually what the extremes anti-heroes go to. That's kind of the birth of the anti-hero. It's what people want to see. It's what people would do in that situation. And it's the, you know, what if someone made the wrong choice, and like pe people so often do, um, and how would that affect the story? Anti-heroes very much are a reply to the generations of, of, uh, being told kind of what to do, how to act, being repressed, and uh, the very cut and dry, almost you know, very black and white um, symbolism and acts of heroism that we've seen in so much traditional media. And they represent kind of the darker side of humanity that people don't want to look at. They represent the, the underside, you know, they represent poverty, or they re represent sad stories, they represent, you know, things that we wish we could change about ourselves. Uh, but sometimes it's much more difficult to do. Sometimes it's, you know, most heroes aren't people that don capes one day and decide to do good. Most heroes are people that went through hardship or have seen hardship and wanted to change that. Researcher Jonathan Michael has a great quote that I'll end on. And he said that perhaps it is the darkness that reels us in because we relate to the darkness. But even so, we hope for the light. And that is the core of what anti-heroes are. They're people that go to the darkest recesses uh, of humanity, of themselves, or see some evil that no one else wants to speak up against. And perhaps they don't do it in the prettiest way, or they don't go about solving it in the most uh, virtuous way, but they, they seek to address that nonetheless. So, thank you. <laughs>